there are lots of ways to write graphics card code. The, the one way that we're going to look at today is called CUDA. So it uh, used to stand for Compute Unified Device Interface. Now it officially just stands for CUDA. Uh, it's only for NVIDIA. So if you've got Intel or ATI GPU, it doesn't really work, which uh, I'm, I'm not sure why the other companies have kind of given up on that, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's NVIDIA. So I, I don't know if you've seen this. So, so basically, like a, a graphics card is a separate device that you plug in to your machine. And it actually has a separate giant connection to your power supply. Uh, it's, uh, let's see, so somewhere here I've got, uh, yeah. Uh, so you said like they have their separate connection to the power supply. These days they have like external GPUs that hook up the Thunderbolt 3. Yeah. That's because the USB Type C Thunderbolt uh, USB Type C comes back to can charge it at the same time or gives it house uh, Usually they plug into the wall and Thunderbolt. Okay, <laughs> So, yeah, so, so it, it's basically just a separate. So, so, so the, the weird part about this is a graphics card just started out doing graphics, right? That they would put pixels on the screen, that was all they did. And then people wanted to get pixels on the screen faster, so they started to build circuits. They started doing stupidly simple things like drawing triangles. And essentially, like, you know, all they did is draw triangles. If you weren't drawing triangles, they were totally useless. And, and the interesting part is that eventually they sort of evolved accidentally into a full-fledged computer, right, running normal style code. But the, the, the weird part about it is there's this really big sort of distinction between sort of GPU, graphics card processing, and, the, and the, the CPU processing we're used to. So everything on the GPU is kind of contained in this one card. Uh, and, and, and it's got like its little CPU, it's got its little RAM. Uh, it doesn't have a network connection, you notice. So how do you do network communication uh, when you're writing a GPU program? You, you have to ask the normal computer to do it, right? Uh, which is kind of weird. Uh, so so uh, GPUs start off without an operating system, of course, because it's drawing pixels. Why would it need an operating system? And it slowly evolved to the point where it's a full-fledged CPU, and then they realized, like, you know, if we didn't have an operating system, we could avoid lots of overhead. So the, the so, so there's this weird division of labor, right? That the OS is all running in the normal CPU. It's it's reading the disk. It's talking on the network. It's it's actually allocating all the memory, like uh, uh, and then the graphics card is doing literally nothing but running the code. And uh, th this is this is kind of a nice division of labor because it means uh, the graphics card focuses 100% on running the code as fast as possible. So. Uh, how much parallelism is there in the code if you're a graphics card? If, if you evolve from drawing pixels on the screen, how much parallelism is there drawing pixels on the screen? Oh, yeah. So if I've got my 4K screen, right, that's 4,000 by 2,000 pixels, uh, I can typically render every pixel independently. Like when we're drawing the Mandelbrot set, right, you just say, like, what's the color of this pixel? And you run this computation, you get the color of that pixel. And uh, so, so graphics cards evolved for million-way parallelism, which sounds nuts, right? I mean, what happens on the CPU side if you make a million threads? Like the OS is just like, oh my gosh, I can't deal with this. There's all this overhead of making threads, etc. So the GPU knows it was designed for you know at least thousands, ideally millions of threads. So it makes threads in hardware. Uh, and uh, it makes threads extraordinarily efficiently. So, so literally, the recommended minimum kind of amount of threads is on the order of a million, which is ridiculous. Uh, so uh, th there's actually so many threads that kind of uh, like, like just a sort of 1D array of threads from zero to a million seems like a bit much to manage. So it, it seems, and uh, so, so th there's, there's sort of a semi-unique concept here, which is a block of threads. And it's just, uh, you can kind of define what this means, but it seems like m modern hardware, it's limited to maybe a, a few thousand threads per block. I believe this is actually how the driver or something keeps track of what's running, like the you know, uh, th threads that are running. And, and usually you want blocks of 256 threads at a time. And, and I, 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 it, th there's no official explanation for what a thread block is. It's just kind of a, it's, it's a thing you have to set. Uh, but, but, uh, but basically like, so, so I, I've got a block of threads, and then in, instead of running just generic functions, like uh, your program has lots of functions, but uh, uh, you're going to fire off, you're going to sort of start on the GPU uh, kernel function. So yet another overloading of the word kernel. Uh, so, so this actually doesn't have anything to do with the OS kernel. It's, uh, uh, it, it's just the, the name for basically a function that you can start running on the GPU. 
Uh, and the uh, uh, GPU's graphics processing unit, I should have expanded that acronym. Uh, so so, so the, the traditional CUDA name for these things are the host and the device, because the, uh, uh, right, the, the graphics card plugs in like a parasite into the motherboard. Uh, and it's this sort of overgrown thing. Uh, but basically, so, so, so the host is the normal CPU. So the so, so wacky part about writing CUDA is basically if, if I, so let me show you the simplest CUDA program. There it is. That's, that's actually CUDA, believe it or not. Now, uh, the, the obvious question is, where is this code running? Well, it's running on the CPU because yeah, that's just where code runs by default, right? This is what, uh, this, is, this is where we start. So if you want to run something on the graphics card, it's, it's actually very much like making threads, but uh, I basically have a separate dedicated function that's where I'm gonna run all my threads. So uh, uh, if, in CUDA, there's this magic prefix global, and this, this means uh, I can start running GPU code here, uh, and then I'm just writing a function, right? Uh, it takes void, uh, it's like uh, this, is, uh, so this is my GPU code, and uh, I don't know, you can take a parameter, or, or whatever, right? Knows I can I can read input. I can actually even do output, right? So uh, so GPU says there's a number, and uh, there's my number. So so n nothing too. It, it doesn't really look all that weird, uh, uh, except you can't just call it. So if I call GPU code a three, this does not compile, uh, and it doesn't compile because uh, a global function call must be configured. Uh, and what this means is that. Uh, this looks like a single threaded call, right? And that's almost never what you want on the GPU. You want to make just, you know, millions of threads to do this stuff, right? Or, you know, a thousand blocks of a thousand threads each might be a plausible amount. So the, the, the way this works is uh, configure looks a lot like a template call. It's just got one more set of less thans. So all I'm saying is I'm saying in here the number of uh, blocks and the number of threads. So I'm going to start really simple saying one block two threads. So I should see GPU says uh, three twice. Let's see if this works. Oh, and I see nothing. Why not? Well, because I, I claim actually the GPU is going to start uh, working and start firing this thing up and then main returns. <laughs> and the GPU is like, fine. <laughs> Great. <laughs> So uh, uh, we, we saw this like in C++ threads, right? When, you, when, you, when I fire off a thread, what do I have to do to make sure the thread actually like finishes running? I, I, I got to join back again. Now there's, there's lots of threads running in here. So, so the official way to do this is I do a CUDA device synchronize. So this is basically like a join GPU. So the, the GPU and the CPU can run in parallel. Right, CPU could be like sending stuff across the network or loading more stuff off disk or something, and then f you know fire off more work for the uh, graphics card to do. So, so essentially, h here like uh, CPU and GPU are running at the same time. So, so there's not only do you have like the multiple threads on the graphics card, but you also have uh, uh, you know uh, CPU and GPU running at the same time. So, so th th this this doesn't look that profound, right? I call printf like, uh, like. Nothing that weird. This is not running on the CPU. And if you look at the disassembly, uh, let's see. There's a, uh, there's a memory clear thing that Netrun puts in. And uh, here's my GPU code. It's been name mangled, which looks kind of ugly. And uh, let's see, oh, it's calling varargs, but it's basically calling vprintf to varargs printf. Y y what do you notice about this disassembly? This is not x86, and it's because the graphics card, I mean, this chip is not x86. It does not come from Intel. It doesn't run normal x86 code. This is, the, you know, the, there, there is a completely different thing happening in here. Uh, and uh, there's actually lots of interesting stuff about the GPU assembly. Like, uh, uh, so, so what do you think that does? That's a move. Uh, it's got a dot U64 on it. What what do you think that means? I get we got like U32s. Uh, yeah, so 64 bit. Yeah. So how many registers does it get? 65,000. Oh wow. Uh, except the, the the registers are actually shared between all the threads. So, so you know, you, you, you're, it's going to be running like millions of threads and blocks of a certain amount, and the, the blocks actually have to share the 65,000 registers amongst themselves. So, so what weird part about this is, uh, so, so there's lots of weird things about the disassembly. Uh, 
And, uh, and I've never written, I've, I've read a bunch of this CUDA assembly, but writing it seems a bit much. The compiler's pretty good, honestly. Uh, so it, it actually starts by saying uh, reg 64-bit uh, SP. That might actually be the stack there. That's cool. Uh, so, 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 so like this, for example, is saying uh, uh, percent %r3 is asking for three registers. Uh, it, uh, uh, so somewhere in here we got a percent %r. We got a million percent %rds. So, so, so like percent %r2, we're actually asking to, for there to be registers allocated to us here. So, so percent %rd6 says that there's 64-bit registers that we've, we're calling rd. So you actually kind of get to name your registers and say how many of the enormous amount that are available that you want. And, uh, and basically, the more registers you use, the fewer threads can run at the same time. So it can, can impact performance depending on what else the threads are doing. But uh, uh, it, it definitely, definitely lots of weird mixed up things. I, except sort of, you know, it's at, at the, the bottom line here is that basically, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm moving values around. There's a bunch of built-in stuff. So this is the, uh, uh, you know, parameter uh, data area. And, you know, I mean, uh, I'm going to call vprintf, right? Uh, I'm adding and moving and converting and loading, right? That there's, it's, it's actually fairly, it's pretty normal assembly language stuff. It's just, you know, it's a totally different machine. And uh, the driver at runtime actually takes this stuff and converts it to the actual machine code that your GPU runs on, which is actually totally secret. They, they do not publish what the machine code is. Why would they do that? Yeah, if they document it, people are going to use it, and if people are using it, then you can't change it. So they just they, they don't they don't admit what the machine code is. Yeah. So what do you mean by it's uh, not published? Like if, if you compile the like .o file? Yeah, it's not a .o. It's a uh, so, so, so the the deal is the GPU code actually gets it ends up getting baked into the exe basically as a big string. So it's okay. kind of weird. And then the string gets handed to the driver, and the driver at runtime, when you, when you load the program, it actually sort of then compiles it for your GPU. So, so the big advantage is that they're not stuck with backward compatibility for a bunch of this stuff. So if they want to, you know, new machine has more registers or less registers or whatever, they can, you know, re, uh, cha change how it's compiled for that, for that very specific machine. Yeah? Theoretically, yeah, it's it's a lot harder to do that. But uh, yeah, yeah, so so uh, CUDA ships with GCC, and there, there's uh, I, I believe they've made it work with uh, Clang and uh, Visual C, uh, Visual Studio. So <laughs> Intel and Nvidia don't get along at all. So I've never been able to make that work personally. <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, I've actually compiled uh, uh, CUDA code using the NVIDIA compiler stack, and then compiled CPU code using the Intel compiler, and then you link them together, and, and that, that works. Uh, question? Intel has had a, uh, Intel has fairly high performance graphics cards at this point, but they don't, uh, actually, they're normally, they come next to an Intel CPU, and uh, they don't run x86. And, 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 it, and it's because back in 1970-something, Intel made the grave mistake of having an extremely successful binary interface. And the problem is then, for the past 40 years, they haven't been able to change that interface. So, yeah. Uh, question? So, you said that Intel makes successful graphics cards. I haven't yeah. really heard of like, graphics cards outside of the onboard graphics cards. It's, it's, it's onboard, okay. yeah. So yeah. It's and, and it's relatively OK. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And and it's 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 a chunk of silicon that does graphics cardy stuff. And and the Intel ones were I don't know like ten years ago they were pretty sad. They could barely run even simple games. But nowadays they're getting to the point where they're they're relatively okay. I mean it's you know anytime you spend five hundred bucks on something and it has its own dedicated heatsink and it's pulling three hundred watts off of the this the. Uh, the, the, the uh, power supply, it's able to get a lot more done than something's just kind of glommed onto your CPU. Yeah. Like, if you don't purposely use it for non-graphic stuff, like yeah. crypto yeah. and you're just using your operating system normally, is it yeah. still only really doing graphics-y stuff? It, it only does graphics-y stuff. 
Yeah. It, it, you have to explicitly ask, uh, un, un, unless you have a global function. Like, like I, I've had big programs that would convert to CUDA, and everything runs in the CPU. It doesn't touch the graphics card at all, except where we basically manually make these uh, th these functions to run. Let's see, question. Well, you mentioned that, like, stuff, like, all the graphics, right? well, I, it, you know, like all the AI in a game, all the network stuff in a game, all the of like file loading in a game is all going to be CPU. All the scripting, all yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, Nvidia keeps talking about like you know, if we just added a little bit more to our graphics card, you could throw away the motherboard, <laughs> and you'd literally just have a graphics card. <laughs> Which, yeah, yeah. I mean, it. it uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, so I, I think this is the same. It's it's a it's a really similar evolution to me of like a phone which was designed to make phone calls. It's not, not that sophisticated. And it evolved into a full-fledged computer that's, you know, talking on the network. And so I, I think the trick was the phone calls are going over the network. And if you're going over the network, then you're like, well, I might as well send data too, like texts. Oh, and if I'm sending, you know, uh, you know voice data and uh, text data, might as well have pictures, right? And then pretty soon you're like, I might as well have a web browser. And like, okay, you need an operating system, you're, you got a whole machine. Yeah. I guess the, the yeah yeah the, the the PlayStation and Xbox have kind of a dedicated OS I, like like a console I guess would be a yeah dedicated for yeah it's it's kind of a good question I I'm, I'm not actually sure how bad the impact is I, I don't it might not actually be that bad. As far as I can tell, uh, Valve's whole goal there was to get Microsoft to make DirectX better. Mm -hmm. that, uh, so, so they're like, well, you know, we could just write our own OS from scratch. And then we would, people would be buying our stuff and not buying anything from Microsoft. Microsoft's like, we better make DirectX a lot better. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, so, so uh, I mean, D D DirectX pretty dang good interface. Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, it actually is a lot better than uh, anything else that's that's available portably. Uh, so, uh, to run code on the GPU, it, I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Right? I put one word in front of the function name. I uh, uh, I use this wacky syntax to like run the function with multiple GPU threads, like. That's cool. Uh, the limitations. Let me talk about the limitations a tad first. So you notice I use printf. What happens if I use co? So yeah, uh, just just that. Uh, it doesn't compile, and it says the address of a host variable c out can't be directory taken into a device function. What does that mean? The C standard library is written on a different machine. <laughs> In other words, they went to a bunch of effort to make printf work, right? And in particular, printf is sort of smuggling the data out to the normal CPU. And they haven't gone to that work with cout. OK, well, if I don't have cout, surely I have vector, right? Uh, no, no, you don't have vector either. Same problem, like, oh, uh, standard string? Standard anything? <laughs> Please, no. No, you have none of that, which uh, you have integers and floating point numbers, for loops. You can call other functions. These would be device functions. Uh, but uh, but, but uh, the whole C standard library is just, uh, the, the, the C++ standard library is gone from you. Actually, a lot of the C standard library is gone too. Uh, this is kind of amazing to me. So uh, you call malloc, right? I want a malloc says of in. This doesn't work either. Why not? Because well, there's two x's. <laughs> Oh, that's brand new. I've never seen that work. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, GPU allocated. So I I, I want to see what uh, what pointer it allocated there. Oh my gosh, this is totally brand new. It didn't. Uh, I'm 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 amazed. Uh, sweet. Huh. Uh, what do you notice about those pointers? They, yeah, they're not, uh, let's see, they're, they're pretty dang far apart, aren't they, for being one int. 
Th th these are two separate threads, so yeah, I don't know, thread, thread allocation, uh, tough to say. Uh, y yeah, so uh, this, this pointer, so let's, let's just do an experiment here. So, uh, I mean, I think, it, actually, a, a GPU seg fault looks really wacky, so we're going to, uh, let's see, so print uh, So I, I, I've never seen this, so I'm, I'm amazed. Uh, allocated some space. Oh, I can actually uh, store data to it. That's awesome. So, uh, so, so great. So that's, yeah. Well, yeah. So, so th this is the question. If I malloc something from a GPU, where do you want it to be malloced? <laughs> Because if it has to leave across this memory bus, or the, like the PCI interface, that's uh, so, so. This interface is like eight gigabytes a second. Like that's not really that slow. <laughs> but the the GPU has so, so the GPU has so, so this GPU you're running on is pretty old. It's uh, uh, the the Netrun one is a 980 Ti, and I swear I had the spec page up here. I think this is this is either a spec page or a marketing page. That would be the marketing page. Uh, the, the, I'm hoping the new egg page has it. Okay. So yeah, uh, 60 Ti. Turn it. Yeah, my recollection is that was uh, I, I, so specs for the Ti. Uh, where's Oh, there, there we go. Okay, so uh, th this is the card. It's kind of an old card. It's uh, it was from the pre. It's a 980. Then the 1080s came out, and just recently the 2080s came out. So this is like three years, uh, four years old. It's actually about the same era as the Skylake. It's about a. Th it was about a <coughs> five, six hundred dollar GPU at the time. It's now maybe two, three hundred dollars. Uh, you notice the number of cores. This is the number of threads that can execute at the same time. Is 2800. Now, the cores only have a clock rate of one gigahertz, right, like Raspberry Pi speed. But there's 2,800 of them, which is, which is kind of crazy. So memory, uh, let's see, it, it comes with six gigabytes of RAM on the card. And uh, the, the memory bandwidth is 330 gigabytes a second, uh, which, uh, which, believe it or not, is really starving the cores. Right, uh, memory bandwidth per core on a CPU is actually way better, which is kind of surprising. So the the, the basic deal here is that uh, so, so, so uh, an eight gigabyte a second link out to the main CPU's memory is appallingly slow. So you want this to be GPU memory. Now this uh, this has uh, this has a lot of unintended consequences. So for example, if I've got an int out here, it's equal to three. I pass the address of an int in. So I, I can pass, ad, so, so passing pointers around in the GPU is no problem. You can totally do that. The big problem is uh, if I dereference those pointers, so I look at uh, X, so basically I'm going to try and overwrite it with 17. Uh, so, so, I, 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 so GPU can write, uh, can write to GPU RAM. Watch this work too. Every time I update the driver, I get these new amazing because it, it gets recompiled. Oh my gosh, it's all changed. Huh. That's that's. Uh... This is the, this is this is wacky to me. So so essentially, all all I did is uh, X here. I guess this is my CPU side pointer. I I know there's a performance cost to this. Oh, right, right, right. There we go. This is kind of what I expected. So uh, x, let's get to value 3. I take the address of x, I pass it to the graphics card. When the graphics card reads that pointer, the surprising thing is that uh, the, the, this didn't crash, apparently. I get 0 out. Why do I get 0 out? Well, because the 3 is living on a different machine. And uh, it's, uh, to me, it's actually a, one of the gravest design bugs in CUDA is that they let you pass bare pointers from one side to another. Th th there are ways to make this work. Like if, if I do a special memory allocation for this three, I can set it up in this special shared data area that the CPU or GPU can both access and using the same pointer. And then I can copy the pointer from point A to point B. Th that's the only reason this compiles. <laughs> but uh, uh, 
knowing what got allocated where is super important. And unfortunately, CUDA has no, like, uh, if, if, to me, if they would have been smart, this would have been a CPU int or a host int maybe would be this uh, CUDA E way to do it. it was, if, if they would have decorated the pointers, then you couldn't accidentally copy stuff over. Th then maybe this would do some slow access out to the CPU or something. Yeah, question. Uh, it's, it's, it's so, yeah, this is the hardest part about writing CUDA, is knowing that there's separate memory spaces and, ma and know, uh, figuring out what, what data is where, and then making sure the data you're accessing is in the right space. So it, it's, it's the same deal where, for example, if I can smuggle this uh, GPU side pointer out, the CPU literally cannot use it, because like if I dereference the pointer, it's a pointer to it on a different machine, right? <laughs> Uh, so in that machine's memory space, it's fine, and on, the, on my machine's memory space, it's like garbage or in inaccessible or no, no, no good. So this is uh, so this is this is where we're at essentially. Is uh, we've got uh, we have two different machines now. You can totally copy data from one side to another. It's a pain. So here, here here's how you do it. So I make a GPU side pointer. I do a CUDA malloc on my GPU side pointer. And uh, I'm going to malloc uh, size of int data. So this is basically like, so, so this is like allocate a GPU pointer. And now if I pass the GPU pointer in, now hopefully it'll be able to read that, uh, that, that thing. So this is, this is not host. This is just, uh, uh, the, the fact that pointers are just pointers. There's no decorations. Uh, let's see. Oh, and I, I declared X without without actually reading it. So we still have zero there because I have not uh, I've not actually copied stuff in. So what I want to do is I have space that the GPU can read, but I can't write to it. And I have space that I can write to, but the GPU can't read from it. We need something that can cross the boundaries, and and the the, the crossing of the boundaries is done with a CUDA mem copy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mem copy into GPU RAM from my RAM, uh, this many bytes. And then I have to tell it which, uh, what memory space each of the pointers lives in. So this is a CUDA mem copy uh, host to device. So, so, so this is a very C style interface. You can see with the malics and the mem copies and stuff. And uh, I, if, if, let me tell you, I have had so many bugs where I screwed up this. I say, yeah, take that device pointer, copy to the host, like, and that doesn't work. Yeah. Can you save this yes. Example? Yep. Uh, let, let me make sure it works. All oh, right. I finally got a three. Cool. So. So all that's happening here is uh, like the C equivalent here would be I'd malloc myself some space. I'd mem copy the data into it. So, so and, and these are literally just derived straight from the C stuff. Yeah. Is it expensive to do like? This one particularly is like almost a millisecond. Seems crazy. So, so the, the idea is like you've got a big program, you're going to be doing a bunch of simulation steps, you do your malloc once. And then maybe, actually the ideal thing to do is you, you do a CUDA mem copy in once. And then it's just cranking along on the GPU and it's not like flinging data back and forth because that will be a huge problem. Yeah? So without the standard library, <laughs> Graphics in CUDA is actually still a little primitive, which is kind of weird. It, like, so, so yeah, I can do DirectX or OpenGL to do graphics, or, or uh, 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 Vulkan, or you know, pick, pick a graphics interface. It does graphics. It, it's not designed for, in particular, graphics programs almost never have like pointer level access. CUDA is designed for sort of general purpose compute. So it's got, you know, uh, I mean, I, I can, and uh, it's actually kind of amazing. Like, I can do full data structures like classes. I can throw exceptions now on the GPU, which seems wacky. I can do bitwise operations. I can, you know, I, I, uh, I can write basically any computation I want in here. It's just all of my reads and writes have to be in GPU memory. And, and it's, it's, that's just the limitation. Like, I can only read or write from GPU memory. And uh, the, the, the crazy part of this, this looks like a CPU side pointer. Like every other program in the world, it just declares the int pointer. Like, yes, of course, that's a CPU pointer. I can read that. And it's just, this, so to me, this is, this is really bad, wacky. Yeah. So it seems like you would want to pass like a point for whatever reason. Um, and that would be a pretty heavy task for the time to, to be worth it, I guess, if that uh, happens. 
Yeah. yeah. So if you benchmark these things, this is like a couple thousand nanoseconds. Because you're flagging down another CPU to work on the stuff. It's actually similar to the time to create another thread. Uh, it's not. It's not really per thread because, like, you can make like almost as many threads as you need, uh, really fast. So, so it, I mean, it, it's weird because GPU is supposed to be faster. That's the whole reason we're dealing with this all this stuff. And uh, CUDA mem copy can be kind of a bottleneck. In particular, it's got just a big startup cost. Uh, running a kernel can be a bottleneck, and it's, again, it's got a big startup cost. The trick and the the way to make GPU stuff pay off. If I CUDA mem copy one int in, I, this is this is going to be slow as can be. <laughs> All right, and I should be copying megs a date at a time. I should be running this not on like two threads, but maybe two million threads is a lot more plausible. So we, we, we should see how to scale that up. Uh, question? Yeah? I don't know why they divided threads into blocks. <laughs> I, I think it's kind of a hardware thing. I, it, it's, uh, it's something I'm a little unclear on. I, I, Mm. Uh, so when I've been running stuff, 256 threads per block is the right number of threads per block. I, it definitely makes a performance difference. Actually, if you get it too big, it stops running completely. Like, uh, uh, so, so the 980 has a hard limit of 1024 threads per block. And I think they bumped it up to 2048 on the current generation. But. Uh, yeah, the, the, so, so uh, within a block, there are certain sort of ways to share data just between threads inside your block, and those are on-chip ways to share data. I mean, but, but block is the one concept that's pretty dang foreign here, right? You know, we've got, you know, we've done threads a ton, uh, you know, but pointers are actually pretty pretty natural. This, it's a little weird having these two different classes of pointers, but yeah, but blocks, I, I mean, I, I actually usually just think of one linear array of threads and then before I run them, I just you know divvy them up into as many blocks as I need to make 256 blocks per thread. So I, I, I try and get rid of the blocks as fast as possible. Yes. Uh, yeah. For for some reason, uh, if the blocks are too big, it seems to slow down as well. Like 256 is a little faster than 512, a little faster than 1024. Uh, if you have really small blocks, I believe there's some uh, per block overhead somewhere in there, because uh, I know like one one thread per block is pretty dang slow. Uh, but yeah, so, so, so uh, actually, I, I think uh, if if I were writing an interface to hide all this stuff, which I've done a couple of times, I basically just hide the notion of blocks, because uh, unless you're doing something really fancy with sh this, this uh, the the on chip shared memory. There's, there's no reason to worry about uh, blocks. So if, if you just think of it as a giant sort of linear array of threads, it's actually a pretty good way to think about it, and pretty good, good way to get high performance. So l l let's, look at, let's do some actual computation here and get, uh, get to high performance. So in particular, uh, n, right, the, the number of things that I'm working on has to be big, right? It's got to be like a million or so. So, so my, my n I'm going to set to literally one million. So when I malloc, I'm just going to alloc a million. Uh, to, so this is basically a GPU array now. Uh, so he, here's, here's my array, and it's going to be n times that, that, that big. Uh, if I have the GPU filling out the array, then I don't need to mem copy data in. I will need to mem copy data out to see what the result was. So, yeah? Um, so it's just a refresher question. Uh, yeah. Um, malloc is alloc. Uh, Mm -hmm. Allocating space for us. How is that yeah. different than new? It's just it's uh, it's the C equivalent of new. Okay, so just yeah. double check. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So uh, how many blocks and how many threads per block? So I, I claim two fifty six threads per block is just the right number to always use uh, for for now for uh, simple computations at least. And uh, so, so essentially, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do enough blo enough blocks. That I get the right n in the end. So it's just you know 256 threads per block and n over 256 blocks for a total of n threads. That's all I'm after. Uh, so r run my GPU code. I've got my array. So there's my array. So m my array comes in on the GPU. I, I really man, I really want to benchmark uh, the malloc stuff. So I, I know if you benchmark this. So for example, if n equals one million, I can't do a million printfs. I mean, even on the CPU, that would be really slow, and it would just you know. Uh, uh, hard to actually see what the heck I'm working on. So uh, let's see. So here's my array. 
Yeah, a, a million Maliks, I will have to see how fast that is. So, so essentially what, uh, what I'm trying to do here is I'm, I'm going to have each of the threads filling out their part of the array. So I have to divvy up the array per, uh, per thread. You know, we actually did exactly this thing with uh, C++ threads where we said, like, okay, I'll take the first half of the array. Weird part about GPU computing, it's actually totally fine to just say every array element gets its own thread. That's literally the scale of the threads that you can operate on here. And, and that's a, it seems to actually be a relatively uh, uh, decent performance uh, doing that. So, so essentially, I just need to figure out what my array index is. And then, then I can do some sort of, I don't know what, uh, so let's do some simple compute. Uh, what's my array index? Now, this is a little bit weird because this fired off a million threads and they all get the same argument. So, uh, you know, clearly you want the threads working on different things. So th there needs to be some way to figure out which thread you are. Uh, and uh, the, the way to do this is with magic variables. So there's a magic variable called thread IDX, thread. And uh, that tells you which thread you are. And there's a, so, so of course, uh, th that's basically 0 to 255. That's your thread index within the block. Yeah. Ah, because you can actually do blocks that are 256 by 256. Oh, okay. this, this is straight out of the, uh, yeah. So, so uh, it, it, this is all one dimensional as we're just doing int, uh, int indexing. Yeah. So uh, my, my, my thread index, uh, see, and, and then I, I want my block index. Uh, and then I got to multiply that by 256. And uh, the 256 you can actually grab. So this would be the, uh, Block dim. So uh, ho hopefully all those built-in variables I've remembered correctly. Oh, oh my gosh, cosine is not uh, is, is not here. I, I thought I, I actually was pretty sure that the, uh, that was in math.h. I, I'm pretty sure there's a cosine that runs on the GPU. Uh, oh, cosine of int is uh, on the GPU. It, it appears to not be on the GPU. So if I do cosine of float, I, I believe they overloaded to certain. Okay, there we go. So it, uh, apparently that ran. Now, how do I get the data out? So I want to know, I want to see array element zero being uh, uh, one. Well, the data is actually stored in here. It, it, unfortunately, you just, you can't directly read it. Uh, GPU array. So my, my suspicion is this will either crash or give the wrong answer. Probably crash the, uh, the CPU. Oh, yep. Uh, that's, uh, that's it crashing. That's, so so the C CPU side code crashed. And because uh, I don't even have the net run like crash handling stuff if I'm writing the main program. For, for some reason, I wanted, I've been, I did all my examples as like main. So there's literally no, there's no safety net here. Like if you crash, you just like, this is you not running anymore. Uh, so you, you cannot directly read a GPU pointer, right? Now there's, I have to have uh, somewhere I gotta have an int and, and then I have to do a CUDA mem copy to pull the data back out. So I'm gonna look, uh, pull it out of GPU array of zero. So this is, uh, so, so read one int at a time. So, so I do int and uh, this is a CUDA mem copy. This one is a device to host. It's copying data back from the GPU to the CPU side. And now I can print X, hopefully. So uh, we read a one successfully. And of course, if this is a uh, thousand times the cosine of, uh, of I, then you know, cosine of zero is one. Uh, cosine of, uh, you know, so I, I can read any array index in here that I want. So cosine of 123 is some wacky irrational number. And I get, uh, yep, so, so that's probably the uh, 1,000 times the cosine of 123. Does, does this make sense? So uh, the, the, the challenge is here. Figure out which thread you are. I mean, th this is sort of just this hard-coded line that I often just put in there. Uh, and then figure out what part of the problem I'm supposed to work on and then solve that part of the problem. So I, I do have to have a CUDA malloc space to uh, t, uh, right, uh, for, for the GPU to run in, and then I have to do a CUDA mem copy to pull the data back. 
So let's, uh, let me take the little Mandelbrot set program that we did last time. So I don't want the CUDAified version. So let's see. So, so, so last time, just uh, to refresh your memory, we had uh, draw Mandelbrot. Takes an image as a parameter and takes, it takes the pixel that you're supposed to render. And then we're going to render, uh, you know, that, that, that's the full size of the image. And then it basically just figures out where you are in the Mandelbrot set, does a Mandelbrot set iteration, and then writes a, a color pixel. So if we, if we had no OpenMP, no parallel at all, I think it was, it was, this was like 600 nanoseconds per pixel. Yeah. So if I, if I do the same thing and I'm going to do, uh, so 600 nanoseconds per pixel sequential, there's one CPU thread. If I uh, slam in all the CPU threads, I get down to 120 nanoseconds per pixel. So let's, let's see how well we can do if we write this thing in the GPU. So we'll do Mandelbrot CUDA. So all I got to do is flip over to CUDA. And uh, I sh I'm just going to run it again to make sure it still works. Uh, so, so everything, you know, so it's 800 nanoseconds per pixel. Different compiler, apparently. Or I didn't, I didn't, opt didn't, didn't optimize the CPU stuff quite as well. So it just got slower. It's annoying. Uh, oh, it, I, I guess may maybe it didn't understand the OpenMP stuff. It, it might have been trying and, and doing bad, apparently. Uh, so, okay, so yeah, even without OpenMP, it's still kind of slow. Uh, so, how, how would we make this be uh, CUDA, right? This, this image, that's all stored in the CPU. Draw Mandelbrot runs on the CPU. So, what I claim what I want is uh, the thing, the obvious thing to make parallel is drawing the Mandelbrot set. So, I, I, I need to make this a global entry function so I can call it like a kernel. Uh, I'm, I can't pass a separate X and Y. Right, there is the, the pixel I'm rendering, the thread's got to figure that out for themselves. So essentially, that's going to go away. I'm going to have to figure out my x and y. I, I, and i got to figure out what my x is. Yeah? Uh, so the standard things like you know, vectors and strings don't get passed well. What about something like a struct? Like if, isn't a struct that's built in basically... So basically, yeah, yeah if, I, if I make a class or struct that's got ints, floats, like bools, like basic types, mm -hmm. you can actually, yeah, you can mem copy it. Totally cool. So it's, Works so great. So you might be able, yeah. be able to pass a struct. You can definitely pass structs, yes. Yeah. It's, uh, no, so, so this is a little bit weird. Like, the, the graphics card supports templates and, uh, you know, namespaces and all that stuff. Uh, it all just gets compiled away. But, uh, but the, 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 the standard, so the big problem is the standard template library is basically all written assuming you're on a CPU. So, so uh, for, for the longest time, I, I swear, until like today when I did this class, malloc didn't work. The GPU couldn't allocate its own memory. So all, all the memory allocation had to happen somewhere else, which, and that breaks like standard string, right? I take like two strings and I stick them together. You've got to allocate a new string to hold the result. Uh, yeah. No, this must have been an accidental thing the last time I updated. I guess uh, this summer when we moved the machines, I, I, I went ahead and pulled all the uh, I updated CUDA. So yeah, I, this is CUDA 9, which really isn't even the, I think, I believe they're on 10. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, so how do we figure out which, so, so actually I'm going to do this one kind of backwards. -y. So I, I need to know which, uh, what location in the array my thread should work on. Well, this is this usual like thread. IDX plus block IDX uh, times block dim. So uh, th this is this is just kind of this default like my array element. So based on which uh, which thread I am, and then I have to figure out my x and y coordinates. There's actually a standard way to do this in a raster graphics program, which is uh, I, I get this 1D array that's storing like the rows and uh, of the image. So, so to figure out where I am in X, I just mod myself along the size of a row. And this is because basically X is just going to loop it back around again as you work through the image. And uh, it's, it's divide. So, so, uh, y, y, so I can figure out my Y coordinate based on my location in the array. This is, this is a, a pretty typical graphics trick. Uh, so n now I have my array index, my X and Y coordinates. And now this I don't have to touch. Right? Uh, 
So all I have to do in particular is not pass x and y. I just have to call draw Mandelbrot on a so, so it's it's a it's a kernel now, right? It does uh, this wacky syntax. So I just have to pick how many uh, threads and blocks per threads. Well, this is the same trick, right? I'm going to take n over 256 blocks, and there are 256 threads per block, and then n is literally just width times height. I happen to have an n laying around already. <laughs> So, uh, so, so this looks like we're done. I, I claim we are actually done, except for the fact that there's different memory spaces. So if I run this, I just passed a CPU pointer to the GPU. And uh, that means it's not going to get written properly. So it was really fast. And I get no image. And uh, I, I, I get no image because, ba oh, and uh, I should have done the CUDA uh, device synchronize. So this is the join the threads. I, I have nothing else useful to do. So t to write this image out, I need it on the CPU. It's the only place I can do I, uh, file I.O. Uh, so so I, I, can, I can allocate a pixel image. I just need to allocate uh, a GPU image. And then I do a CUDA malloc. Uh, GPU image. Uh, let's see, and this is n pixels basically in the image. And then wh when I pass this in, this better be the GPU one. And, and this, this is the annoying part about writing CUDAs. Like, I just have to remember which memory space each of my pointers live in. So, uh, let's see, so, so hopefully we've done that. And uh, we have that. And then uh, I. I have the data is stored in the GPU image. I got to get it back to the CPU image before I can write it. So this is a CUDA mem copy, and I'm, I'm going to mem copy into my uh, CPU side image from the GPU image, and this is also n times size of pixel bytes. And the direction here: mem copy device to host, because I'm copying stuff from the GPU back to the CPU. Does that make sense? So, uh, how fast? It was 600 nanoseconds on one thread of the CPU. On all the cores of the CPU, we got it down to 100 and something nanoseconds. Hopefully better than that, or yeah. Ah, there's the image, which looks perfect. And it took, is, can that be right? C calling is kind of expensive, except we got a million threads. So you amortize the cost. I mean, this is like a couple thousand nanosecond startup cost. You amortize that across a million threads, it's gone. Is this plausible? This is less than the time to call a function. Well, uh, we didn't actually have any functions. We have one kernel. And uh, the, the, the GPU makes threads in hardware. And it's designed to be really cheap because they wanted you to make a lot of threads. This, the, believe it or not, this is correct. This is, it literally takes 0 0.9 nanoseconds per pixel, which is 100 times faster than the multi-core version. Ah, it's because this is the best kind of thing for a graphics card. Graphics card loves this kind of problem. Uh, in particular, you notice this problem has a, all it's doing is floating point arithmetic. And it's not touching memory, which means you're not bottleneck like loading stuff out to RAM. Uh, it's not touching disk, it's not allocating like this. This is super crazy fast. Yes? So is this like we're kind of like glad you have frames per second? That's <laughs> yes. The, the, pretty much the only known way to get like complicated graphics, high resolution displays in real time is this kind of performance. Okay. Yeah. You notice this is a billion pixels per second. Which, you know, that's, that's nice. This is good. Uh, eight. Yeah. yeah, sure. So. Ah, I think it's 65,000 blocks. Yeah, they're all powers of two. Yeah. Uh, so this is really fast. Is this a property of anything that's fractal? Or is it, this just happens to be fractal and fast? This happens to be fractal and fast. It, uh, so, so, I, I, so in other words, it's not out of the question to get 100-fold speed-ups over multi-core. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
the, 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 so the, there's a bunch of things that, that have to go right for you to get this kind of a crazy speed up, right? There's the, the GPU, like the chip itself is like made of a block of, uh, uh, you know, like if you got 2,800 cores, like arithmetic is not the problem. Right? Uh, and, and in particular, surprisingly enough, you can add a bunch of arithmetic. So you, you see, we're doing up to a thousand iterations of this stuff. And it's just, you know, simple, like, floating point stuff. You can put, like, a trig call in the middle of this thing, and it slows down. I mean, it costs, like, you know, uh, oh, sped up. Well, it, it actually sped up because we broke out earlier. A different, uh, different image. I should do, what should I do here, sign or something? So I, I, need, I need to uh, limit the magnitude. Uh, yeah, okay, there, take three nanoseconds. So we, you see we have a little bit of nonlinearity slowly sh uh, shearing uh, the image just a tad. But like, you know, you put enough trig or something, then it, you know, it's up to three nanoseconds. Like, the, the, the corresponding CPU version uh, is, is like, I mean, the, the trig, trig really hurts it. Uh, so, so, so uh, no memory access is good. This is, uh, G GPU loves no memory accesses. Because as soon as you have memory accesses, you get 2,800 cores pounding away on the mere 300 gigabytes a second memory bus. That's the bottleneck, right? Uh, you do CUDA mem copy on data that doesn't have a whole bunch of arithmetic intensity. So, so in particular, like, uh, my three bytes of a color took like a thousand iterations of floating point, right? There was the, the arithmetic intensity of my products here is extremely high, right? It took a ton of work to get these uh, few bytes out. Again, if, uh, if you have low arithmetic intensity, basically like I'm, I'm not really waiting for memory because I'm maybe not writing that much stuff to memory, but I'm also not keeping the cores busy. In other words, you're actually just uh, like the limiting factor on you're just waiting for uh, writing the answer out to RAM is like, I mean, hundreds or thousands of arithmetic operations, which is really wacky. Uh, yeah, uh, you really can't be doing CUDA mem copies because this is, this is only like a couple of gigabytes a second over the PCI Express bus. So if... if uh, if, if I have a bunch of data that I'm basically like slamming back and forth between the CPU and GPU every frame, like that's gonna kill you. That's, uh, th th that's what you'll be waiting for. So, so if nothing else is the bottleneck but arithmetic, your performance is crazy. Uh, now, uh, I mean, it's, it's not a super easy interface to use, but the, the potential delivered performance, I mean, getting a hundredfold speed up on AI stuff, on uh, uh, like big data stuff is really like a game changer, crypto stuff. And this is where GPU has really dominated. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it does not do single threaded stuff well at all. Uh, and and the, so, so the, there's an interesting example of this, which is uh, instead of doing X and Y, I'm gonna loop over, uh, so, so it, I'm gonna basically fire off one thread, so one by one, and I'm gonna measure the single threaded performance of my uh, uh, GPU. So this is y equals zero, uh, y is less than height. Uh, so I've just gotten rid of all the parallelism here, and uh, my array index is y times width plus x. So uh, performance, what do you what do you think? This is going to be awful. This is going to be slower than the CPU, of course. Uh, let's see, O oh, X and Y. Ah, I have to declare them. Ah, uh, so this is like actually I may run out of time on net run. Let's see, you, you can tell it's still working. Actually, compiling may be a big bottle. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't finish in two seconds, which is crazy, right? And, and uh, if you shrink this thing down to like a tiny 128 by 128, I'm totally over time here. Uh, s s single threaded GPU performance is like 8,000 nanoseconds per pixel, 10 times slower than the CPU, right? Uh, so, so, so sing single thread performance is really bad. Don't do single thread. You must have multi-threads. <laughs> All right, have a good Thanksgiving. Uh, no class Wednesday.